in their own words because we're too greedy and live too well. Think that they would discuss the financial derivatives fiasco in the annual report, but they didn't. However, they did issue a statement on uh, May 18th stating that up until December of last year, there were about $584 trillion worth of derivatives worldwide, which it appears to be very small considering it's about 1.4 quadrillion, at least according to the uh, uh, figures coming you know, from the uh, econometric institutions here in the United States and Europe. So it's a rather interesting discrepancy there. But I wonder But that's kind of like a black hole the size of the Milky Way or a black hole the size of the solar system. If it's right up on you, it's going to gobble you up. Or they may reappear 6 months from now and more bailouts will be needed worldwide. No, no, they're already the, the, they're already saying that. Do you have a question for Alan White? Uh yeah, I just wanted to mention Alan that uh, what you said uh, is nothing new to me. However, the model that Foucault talked about, uh, using Jeremy Bentham's uh, metaphor, the prison panopticon seems to be here with the technology. And the sad thing is that many of these modalities were discussed 60, 70 years ago. I was thinking of Harold Blaswell's National Security State uh, concept and book that it was uh, written 1939 to 1940, where he really outlawed a complete... Uh, Western sort of Soviet-style kind of national security state with violations of uh, accepted freedoms and constitutional... Yeah, that's right. They use the threat to national security, then they build the shadow government around that. Now, it's it created this parallel government. Now, the parallel shadow government is coming out in the open and absorbing what's left. They've, you know, kind of like putting an egg in vinegar. They've been dissolving our shell turning our skeleton into rubber so they can more easily, like a demonic pelican, force us into their maw. Uh, thank you for the call. Let's get Alan Watts' comment on that. Yeah, and also, too, there's another technique involved, uh, written back about 1914, and H.G. Wells, the, who was an official propagandist for the Cecil Rhodes Foundation and the Fabian Society, two big players backed by the Astor family and their billions, uh, he, he called it the world brain. He said, eventually, all uh, information will be controlled by a world brain, and this information would, would develop a brand new world culture, which would be under the control, of course, of those fittest to rule it. He's talking about supercomputers and so on. And they were talking in the 20s about putting drugs and things in the water, specifically fluoride, diet, injections, yes. and injunctions to turn us into gibbering slaves, and they've done an excellent job. Yeah, and Julian Huxley, the first uh, CEO of UNESCO, also advised to use this, this technique. Uh, but they also, uh, according to uh, Lord Bertrand Russell, another big player, who was also a member of MI5 and 6, by the way, um, he said uh, that um, they would also use the needle to make the people more compliant. That's what he said in his own book, The Needle. Yeah. yeah. I had a Wall Street Journal writer here the other day, and she was definitely on the prowl. Uh, I hope it's a, somewhat of a fair piece, but I doubt it, but I'm not going to cower from it, though I just may not have time for more stuff like that in the future. And I explained to her, I said, you know sodium fluoride causes brain damage and bone cancer, and I was printing her mainstream articles. She goes, no, I know that, but she said the elite have to drink it too, like it was okay. And I said, well, if it's so bad, why do they do it? And she's like, and like didn't compute. She said, yeah, but they have to do it too. And I said, no, they don't. When Jay Rockefeller was here in town, I did a uh, radio show at a station years ago. This was about 12 years ago. And the other guy had a, uh, well, he owned a marina, big marina, and, and he also owned a bunch of boats you could charter. Big, you know, I mean, big for Lake Travis yachts. You know, things of the whole, like 50, 60 people, really nice. And he would take rich people out and, 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 and captain it. And uh, Timmy Bluff wanted to scuba dive at the right time of the year in the Rock Bottom Lake. It's, it's really a Colorado River canyon they filled. It's a 37-mile-long lake. But long story short here, for dreaming about being on the lake, and then I've been going on the lake in two years. I'm so busy. Literally, two years. I love it. I think about it every day. But the, the issue is Jay Rockefeller was down here for two days with the SOS people surveying tens of thousands of acres they'd stolen through uh, watershed rules. And he was captaining the boat with some of the servants and people feeding him and all this stuff. And 
he also did trips with people down to the Caribbean, but that's a separate issue. And he said he sat there watching it, and, and they had caviar and food for everybody, but, but Jay Rockefeller and a few of his assistants, they had ice chests with their own food, their own servants, their own wine, their own bottled water. Yep. And, and by the way, it was a certain brand of Arkansas water that I later saw one of my friends was drinking, and I found all the Hollywood folks drink it. It's uh, the same with that green bottled water I got around here sometimes. The point is, he had that, a uh, Mountain Valley, uh, 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 Mountain Valley, right? Mountain Valley Spring. And uh, he had all these little packaged in paper, it couldn't be plastic, salads and food. and was all about how it was all totally organic and all had been grown on farms his family owned. Yep. Then I did a Google search years ago and found every that, that what you said. And, and the same thing with Prince Philip. I later saw That's him right. in a documentary about Windsor Palace. He has all his own fields, all his own beef. It was him on TV, on PBS, inspecting it and inspecting the grain and making sure nothing GMO was fed behind this walled city and how they have the meat and food flown around with him. Go ahead. Yes, and uh, there's an article in a British newspaper, Prince Charles too had over, I think, 80 to 100 farms, tenant farmers worked on them. Uh, again, massive herds of, of Angus uh, beef, uh, uh, lots of... Uh, Thousands and thousands of acres of, of naturally grown corn, etc., um, and everything that you need. They do not need. To, they don't. They don't eat what we eat. There's no way. But plus, here's another thing too. Most folks don't realize that these very important people already believe that we are so contaminated with different diseases that they. And this was in the, this was in the, the newspaper in Canada about two year, two or three years ago. It came out when the Prime Minister of Canada was going abroad. All Prime Ministers and high-level bureaucrats and important people carry at least two pints of their own blood, refrigerated blood, with them wherever they go. That was in USA Today uh, yeah. that Al Gore has a whole refrigerator of blood that follows him. That's right, because they, have, they believe they've already been successful in infecting us all with different kinds of things. They will not risk getting a transfusion from us. And the standard procedure has been for the last uh, well, at least 15 years. Well, that ties into Bayer knowingly for over a decade, over a million doses, just in one case, of Factor Eight, knowing it all had HIV and hepatitis, and their own documents came out, even MSNBC reported it like it was no big deal, knowing they were going to kill everybody. And they said, oh, well, Bayer was just greedy, didn't care. No, this was a religious sacrament. This was a murder operation, lovingly carried out. Yes, that's right. And so the public have no idea how far ahead uh, these characters are. I've even been asked about the spraying and how can these guys be breathing the same air as we. Well, most of the time these guys are in their, their air-conditioned filtered limos or in their air-conditioned filter homes. But they also, and, and someone sent me this thing, uh, that there's a, actually a collation device that goes in your vein and it's portable and you can strap it to your arm. No one knows you're even wearing it. And apparently it's just as effective as the renal kidney dialysis machines. They can be set to take out any kinds of toxin. But it's so expensive, the public won't get it. And you well, well I want to add, there's certain food. areas they don't spray, like white fishing areas, where they stay most of the year now, where yep. they're not chemtrailing. And I wanted to bring that up. Mm -hmm. They have admitted they've been chemtrailing since the mid-90s. They got a Nobel Prize in 92 for it. I'm making a separate film on that. And... We always said it's barium salts, it's aluminum dioxide, it's terraforming, but also toxic. They love multifaceted things that do, you know, that cover multiple bases. They love grand slams where they get to carry out multiple evils at the same time and consolidate power. And now they've just come out in USA Today and Associated Press and Reuters and here it is, Wall Street, Wall Street Journal two weeks ago. It's time to cool the planet with Kim trailing terraforming and the ingredients they list is exactly what Private scientists studied it and said it was, and then they go, oh, yes, that was all just testing. Now we're going to start the real operation. The Earth's 20% darker, and all the climatologists I interview say that looking at what they're spraying is actually heating the Earth. So are they trying to cause more? I mean, we know they have weather weapons. I broke the, you know, the father of weather weapons, Ben Livingston, here on air. What they were doing with it 50 years ago, could, they could control hurricanes in the late 60s, Stanford Research Institute certified. But are they planning to engineer cal bigger calamities and droughts and then say, oh, yeah. oh see, yeah. we've got to save you? But then but then cover it saying they're trying to fix it? Because That's we've exposed right. the chemtrails, exactly. now they've got to admit it. Go ahead. Yeah, in the 1970s, I think 78, 
all the major countries, United States, Britain, and Canada, and so on, all signed an international agreement, a treaty at the United Nations on weather warfare. And people can go into it and check it out for themselves. In there, it tells you what they could do then. They could create earthquakes, droughts, floods, famines, and so on, all just with the harp technology and the spraying alone in conjunction. And Secretary of Defense Cohen, 1997, April 27th issue of Army Times, said the exact same thing. In fact, people don't believe it. Uh, type Secretary of Defense William Cohen, uh, Army Times, weather weapons. Or, or, or Secretary of Defense William Cohen, Army Times, earthquakes. That'll pull it up, too. Go ahead.